Okay, what's up guys? So, um, like Fact Faction has said, there is this channel that has part two of that, uh, that the, not the last video, but the first video of the five strange internet mysteries still unsolved. This is part two. I, I thought it was a uh, fact faction I, um, until they had what they had said at the ending. They was like, oh yeah, Twist TV, they have a uh, part two. And I was all like, oh, I thought I was just going to have to wait a little bit and then um, for part two to come out because I was all like, yeah, when part two comes out of that video, I'm definitely going to go and uh, watch it. Like after like the first, after the first two, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to go and uh, watch part two and things. But anyways, uh, part two was already out. And uh, it's uploaded on a different channel, and I guess they are friends with the people behind um, Fact Faction. And this channel is called Twist TV. So, anyways, yeah, they got part two. So, like I did with wait, wait a minute. Okay, there we go. Let's. I don't know why my mouse thing got hung up. Subscribe to them because I'm subscribing for more videos. They look like they got more other videos too and things. That's uh, oh, they got like a lot of part two, so they might just be uploading a lot of uh, part two videos and stuff like just going back and forth over. So, yeah, I subscribe to them just right now because I already know this is th th this is going to be a good video based off of that fact faction video. So, anyways, let's check this out Five Strange Internet Mysteries Still Unsolved Part Two. Something's going on with my okay. Before we start this video, I'd like to say that this is a collaboration with Fact Fiction. Part one fiction? is uploaded what? on this channel and is linked below, so be sure to check that out. Is it fiction also, or fact? If you haven't already I... subscribed to his channel, then oh, certainly do just... so. It's quickly approaching 200,000 subscribers. That is true, 40k Let's get away. To it. Number five, GhostNet. GhostNet is the name given to a large-scale cyber espionage operation discovered in March 2009. It was discovered when a group of Toronto University researchers were asked to check security on the Dalai Lama's private network. The mysterious online spy network they found was terrifying. The operation's command and control infrastructure was based mainly in China and had infiltrated high-value politicians and media locations in 103 countries. More than a thousand computer systems were infiltrated, including Dang. embassies and other government offices. Wow. Shockingly, it could activate cameras and microphones on infected computers, recording wow. anyone in the room. Files could be searched remotely and programs installed without the user's knowledge. The Trojan was primarily delivered through social engineered emails. Upon installation, it connected back to a controller server and waits to receive commands. The infected computer would execute commands specified by the control server. Although the activity was mostly based in China, the Chinese government denied all involvement in this operation and conclusive links between the Chinese yeah, government it had to and like some, like, were not discovered. Low no budget one knows who's behind it or what their goal is. Let me just. Uh, all right, because okay, I know four is getting right. So my thoughts on that, it had to be because if they, if it was like the uh, Chinese like government, they was like, oh yeah, we had nothing to do with it. They might have, but at the same time, it might have just been somebody living out there, or it could have been somebody they traveled out to China and did all of that hacking, and then when they, you know, went there, they was like, okay, well, the hackers, they were like, we're just going to put the blame on China and everything, and so that could be very true, but at the same time, who knows, it's still, yeah, it's always going to be a mystery, nobody's not going to know and stuff, but uh, anyways, let's move on. Number four, Mariana's Web. Beneath the surface web we use every day, there's a layer called the Deep Web, which is a creepy black market network. But, surprisingly, there's an even deeper level of the internet. It's named after the deepest ocean trench on Earth. It's called Mariana's Web. This hidden level of the internet is below the Deep Web, however nobody has ever been able to access it, at least no one that we know of. Oh. The Mariana's Web is the Vatican's secret archives of the internet. It's rumored to contain a repository of some of humanity's best kept secrets. There is a lot of speculation about this mysterious level of the internet. Some say it contains a super intelligent computer artificial intelligence that can control the entire internet and gathers all human knowledge. Wow. Accessing the Mariana's web is no easy feat. 
It's said that one would need to use a high-level mass function called polymeric Falkygol derivation, which requires quantum computers to work. The problem is, quantum computers do not yet exist. There's no underlying proof that the Mariana's so, web okay, let me does just, exist. I'll talk so it's about unclear that. whether this is just another internet hoax. Is that it? They, yeah, that's it. So they say you're gonna need a certain computer to access that, like that. They said that deep part of the internet or something. So does it? How is it going to exist if you need that? computer and the computer hasn't even came out yet you see what i'm saying like i understand like you know that's why i just i don't believe something like that would exist because if you would need a computer that doesn't exist to access that part of the internet then how okay that obviously the, the computer exists if you <laughs> can access that part of the internet but one would think once when that computer comes out then that's probably when that internet would come out but Anyways, it's it's just, you know, it's stuff like that that just leaves you thinking, like, you know, how would that even work? And it's just, it's, I don't know how it, how it would exist if that computer doesn't exist yet, so. But anyways, let's, let's just move on. Number three, Gary McKinnon. Gary McKinnon, systems administrator and computer it hacker, looks like that one science dude, Bill Nye, the science guy, a little bit. the biggest military computer hack of all time. While looking for information on free energy and he UFOs, he discovered a method of accessing NASA's computers wow. via remote desktop connection. Shockingly, these computers were not password protected. He discovered a picture showing a strange UFO in a very high resolution next to a government spacecraft in orbit. Since it was 2002, he was using a dial-up connection, thus causing the massive picture to download and render through his remote connection very slowly. Just as it was about three quarters of the way finished, someone noticed the computer was being controlled remotely. They quickly regained Dang. control and Gary watched as the mouse moved up to the right corner of the window and closed it. Gary's <laughs> connection was immediately cut. He was arrested at his home in the UK by international That's police crazy. from the United States government. The US tried but failed to have him extradited and they wanted to put him away for the rest of his life. It makes you wonder what exactly he saw that made the U.S. government go to such <laughs> lengths to extradite yeah. him. Even more interesting is what else was on those computers that he didn't see that the government had <laughs> tried to protect. <laughs> That's true. That's, that leaves you thinking. Number two. But, all right, because I, okay. Okay, my bad. There was, like, somebody calling my house and the phone was all blasting loud. But, anyways, um... How does it like, you know, because, yeah, they definitely NASA, they were hiding something if they wanted to put this dude off up in there for life and extradite him from the UK to uh, the US and things. Because it's like, why, why do all of that if you ain't got nothing to hide? There's obviously some that they have to hide. And it's, I don't, you know what, I'm going to get myself caught in that situation. But I'm just saying, there's obviously something that they were hiding that they did not want others to see. So, uh, that's definitely, d uh, people do some research into them. What are your guys' thoughts on all of the videos, actually, so far? But what are your guys' thoughts on that? Like, does NASA have something to hide? Or, you know, do they just not want people hacked into their, you know, systems and stuff? And then even what this, uh, the Twist TV guy was saying, it's like, what were the other things that, you know, that he, because I'm pretty sure the guy is missing out on other stuff that he also didn't see and things so yeah they need to either up and up on their um security system or just not have anything to hide to where people gotta hack you just to see what you're hiding and stuff but anyways i'm not trying to tell people encourage people to you know oh hack their system to see i could care less what they have all right but um it's just like but yeah if you if you are that upset then it's like obviously there's something that you guys had to hide and things they come by there's not going to be one soul on this uh, earth and things that's going to just get that upset and stuff but other than yeah i mean yeah hacking is bad all around but um it's just you know it's if there's something that you have that you're hiding then it's you know it i mean it's i, I guess they had a reason too but i'm not encouraging people i'm just going to throw that out there i'm not encouraging others to do it but anyways the markovian parallax denigrate Similar to the A858 Reddit case, in the mid-90s, one of the oldest surviving internet mysteries came from a proto-web chat community called Usenet. The Usenet community reported unusual spam coming from the username Markovian Parallax Denigrate. These strange random messages and phrases were distributed among the community. 
Immediately, it was speculated that human intelligence was behind them. Hundreds of these messages flooded the Usenet discussion groups. Even though the community was filled with some Same of the most talented computer experts at the time, no one could figure out what they meant or how exactly they were generated and distributed. Conspiracy theorists made links between it and Saddam Hussein's government. Others believe it was the work of an internet troll or prankster. Go, Ben. Number one, internet black holes. The internet is wonderful in so many ways, and as a result, it has made communication a lot easier. True. Seconds after you press send on an email, your message arrives in someone's inbox. But things don't always go to plan. Every now and then, that email will simply disappear. Where it goes, nobody knows. It's a phenomenon known as internet That's black crazy. holes. Found in cyberspace, these holes can suck in information. Wow. Data packets failing to arrive at their destinations is a common That's occurrence scary, since the though. earliest days of the internet. What's interesting is that the data cannot simply vanish. It has to go somewhere. It's but true. where might that be? We have no clue. Tech experts, government agencies, and hackers have all been unable to figure this out. It's possible that there is a whirlpool of information out there pulling data in. In late 2013, one internet black hole was discovered rerouting people's information from the US to an address in Iceland. But it was never discovered just who was behind this or what the reasoning was. Well, That's thanks crazy. for watching and be sure to subscribe for weekly videos. A massive thanks to Fact Faction for doing this collaboration. Go subscribe to him and also check out part one on his channel which is linked below. Mm -hmm. It was a good, I think, yeah, I think that was, I think that was it. But it was a good video how they was uh, talking about some of the, uh, the really, the one that really did catch my eye was the NASA hacking one because it's like they got so upset and it's like, obviously there was something to hide that, that they didn't want the public to see because chances are that dude, if he would have seen something that he wasn't supposed to see and uh, he, chances are he probably would have leaked out that information and then NASA would have had to explain a lot to the public like what's up with that or you know or people would be asking questions like oh what's up with you know with this and that and everything but good video really did enjoy this they do have I, that's what caught my eye and I'm trying to f remember if I did react to a part two of the uh, five extremely mysterious and unexplained videos I can't remember if I did or not but I am going to uh, search it up in things open up another YouTube tab and search it up so I can see if I had um, if I had uh, reacted to a part two of that video but if if I didn't then that's what I'm going to be reacting to after I react to a few more videos but if I already did, then uh, I just don't remember because I you gotta remember I upload a lot of reaction videos, so I don't remember exactly what videos I reacted to or you know so on. But I, if I if it catches my eye or something, I'm like, wait a minute, I think I've seen this already. But other than that, good video, Twist TV. You know they they're kind of a small channel. They got seventeen thousand subscribers, so I feel like yeah. I mean my I know my subscribe. It's just you know it's going to just get them with like one subscriber higher to the goal that they want to reach but i mean i'll be happy with seventeen thousand. but other than that everybody go subscribe to them anyways you know if you can subscribe to me you can subscribe to these guys too but in that being said people thank you for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you are new please like and subscribe once again go subscribe to twist tv now i will talk to you guys later peace